Well, our next speaker is Joe Biden's worst nightmare, an armed, trained, courageous woman. She burst into the national scene a few years ago, but in that time, she's done more to advance and defend individual liberty than Joe Biden's done in his lifetime. To help me out with this introduction, please welcome a truly courageous young man and deep believer in freedom. Not only is he a survivor of last year's tragic mass shooting in Parkland, Florida, but here in a few weeks, he'll graduate from high school as the Stoneman Douglas valedictorian. Please welcome my friend and young warrior, Kyle Kashuv. USA. All right. On February 14th, 17 souls were murdered just yards away from me. I can still remember the panic I felt. When the gunshot stopped, my shirt was stained with tears and sweat. And even now, I can't forget that if the shooter had taken a left and not a right, I would have been directly in the firing line. What started as a morning concerned with tests and grades quickly turned into an evening of bloodshed and heartbreak. Glued into the television, I watched as the death toll rose. One by one, all missing persons were pronounced dead. February 14th's bloody bullets shred through a bubble of my naivete. My feeling of emptiness was indescribable. No one should feel the hopelessness my classmates and I felt in the wake of the shooting. For me, this was a call to action. I knew I must do everything in my power to make sure that school shootings should never happen ever again. So what makes it me, uh, a 17-year-old kid who can't even purchase a gun yet, so dedicated to this cause? Well, it's because despite the tragedy that happened at my school, I recognize that there are a multitude of factors that led to the shooting, and none of them have to do anything with a gun. There was a law enforcement officer who stood outside the shooting while my peers were getting slaughtered and did absolutely nothing. He let my peers die. There were leftist policies that allowed the shooter to commit crimes and never be arrested. A school board that failed to spend millions of dollars of school safety funds that would have saved so many lives. And after the shooting, all of these elected officials came out and railed for gun control while they were the ones responsible for the shooting. So all leftist organizations, the media, and celebrities all called for confiscation of guns. I recognize that this isn't a gun issue. There is no reason to disarm law-abiding citizens because of the malice of a few. Gun control is not only ineffective, it's entirely dangerous. And here's why. Why is it that every time there, there's a shooting by some crazy gunman, do we turn and disarm law-abiding citizens? Gun control only disarms law-abiding citizens. Gun control never disarms criminals. Why is it that after every single school shooting, we seek to raise the age from 18 to 21? Why are we making it so that a single mother who's 20 of two kids shouldn't be able to defend her children? All we want is to go home and to be able to defend our families. That's all we want. All we want is to keep our family safe. So as we've seen in Parkland and Texas Sutherland Springs and so many other shootings, we cannot afford to wait for the police to respond. It is essential that not only do we, that we arm staff, we arm teachers. Let teachers protect their students. There are 30 states, as the president said earlier, that have this in place. Not a single one of them have any of these incidents. But what's really kept me going throughout all of this is one, nam, one man named Andrew Pollack. Andrew Pollack lost his daughter, Meadow, in the shooting. And every day this man wakes up and walks by his daughter's empty room and says, screw it, 
I'm gonna fight. Through tears and grief, this man wakes up every morning while his daughter is never coming back and fights. And that's what keeps me going. But what's more startling is between me and my peers. It's that February 14th was a real reality check. I learned that, it, that I have to defend myself and that the government failed me. It's unbelievable how my peers know that the government failed them, yet they come around and decide to give them more power and responsibility. You know, if the left really believes that the police are some tyrannical, oppressive, brutal force, why give them more power? That's something that I still haven't been able to wrap my head around. It's entirely hypocritical. But here's the thing. We already have all the rules and regulations for gun control that we need in the books. There's enough gun control already, all right? Our rights already be stripped away daily. It's time for the police to do their job, okay? Because if we already have all these great rules and regulations on the books and the police aren't doing their job, what's the point? So here's where the left is entirely hypocritical about. Our courtrooms are protected by guns. Our airports are protected by guns. Our banks are protected by guns. And guess what? Even our elected officials are protected by guns. Why are our schools not deserving are the same protection? Why is it that leftist politicians rail for gun control, yet they're protected by DC police who are armed? Do our youth not deserve the same protection? Why does the left think that our kids, our kids don't deserve the same protection as our elected officials? See, the solution to school shootings is the Second Amendment. We need to get rid of gun-free zones. All gun-free zones do is create a soft target, and school shooters know that. It is, a, it is a soft target for them to wreak havoc because they know they face no armed opposition. School shooters love gun-free zones so much that in 96% of all mass public shootings, they occur in gun-free zones. That's a fact. So we need to arm our schools. And yes, that includes giving teachers and school staff the ability to carry a concealed weapon. It is time to secure our schools because our kids deserve it. They deserve that when they go to school, they know that they'll be safe. When parents drop their kids off at school, they should expect them to return home. You shouldn't send two kids to school one day and only for one of them to return home. It's time to protect our schools.